when it comes when it comes to rock and roll access there are probably only two bands in the hunt Roxette and the who and let me tell you the who the who were really wild they destroyed their sets they destroyed their hotel rooms they destroyed their own eardrums as the world's loudest rock and roll band and they also left a legacy of extraordinary music including the rock opera tommy a legacy in no small part due to the amazing voice of their lead singer please welcome mr roger daltrey Long time no see, Lord. <laughs> Come on in. This is uh, eight million cows died for this interview, by the way. This is a bit much, isn't it? It's what? Very flash, isn't it? What? You're, you're just jealous, aren't you? Well, <laughs> got the old Doc Martins, mate. Yes. Good stomping boots. That's right. Give you the bounce. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get in a fight with you. Actually, we've got two fighters here, really, haven't we? No, no, no. no. You, didn't you always used to thump Pete Townsend? No, no. no. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I plead the fifth. Oh, yeah. right. Who's to thump me? Yeah, right. That's yeah. why my nose goes this way. <laughs> His nose goes His that nose way, goes yeah. <laughs> Now, you're, you're coming back with The Who in October. What's the lineup? It's uh, John Entwistle, our bass player. Yep. We haven't been able to get Keith back, unfortunately. No, no. Um, <laughs> but, uh, he, he, are you we, trying? <laughs> <laughs> I miss him every day, though. I mean, bless him. Yeah. But we've got Zach Starkey on the drums, who's uh, Ringo Starr's son, who was taught to drum by Keith Moon, so that's interesting. Not by his dad. No, no, no. His dad, his dad really... wasn't in the house much in those days. <laughs> right. He was busily uh, doing things elsewhere. And I've got uh, Pete Townsend's young brother, Simon. Right. So it's a, it's a really good band. So, yeah. As you already know, Simon Townsend uh, means something else in this country, but not to worry about that. Oh, does it? What does it mean? Uh, it means the guy that goes, eh, a lot. Oh, does it? Yes. Not to worry well, about that. he does that, actually. Yeah. Oh, good. He's maybe the same guy. Is it going to be... Does he it... sing? No, I don't think it's the same guy. I really don't. Yeah. I really don't. Unless he has a large dead dog next to him. Oh. No, he's... This, no, no. This, must, one, this one's married. You're going to go away thinking, what the hell was the large <laughs> dead dog about? Now, is it going to be like the, the Who of older? And you know what I'm referring to here. We've got a bit of footage. This is the Who in, in their, at their peak. There we go. Oh, yes. Now, I really feel sorry for the roadie just about here, actually. <laughs> you upset because someone made you wear that poncho, Roger. It was a bedspread, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> from a hotel room, the Keith trash. It was a, yeah, it was. It was the bedspread from the, the motel up the road. So is that what... Uh, are, you, are you still doing that? No, I can't afford to. Really? No. No, we nearly went broke doing that. I was going to ask, it must, you must have ended up in the red uh, many times. We were very much in the red, and then Tommy came along and it uh, put everything in the black, fortunately. Now, uh, speaking of Tommy, the first time Pete Townsend ran this idea past you, like, it's great, Rog, I've got this whole rock opera about a deaf, dumb and blind pinball player. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Pete, right, yeah. yeah. A lot of people would have laughed that out of the room, I think. Yeah, including us at the time. No, I, I mean... It, it, it seemed so bizarre, but it was the kind of, it was so off the wall, it was just the kind of thing that might work. Yeah. And it did. It's a crazy idea, but it might just yes, work. Yes, that's right, one of those. Chris, have you ever trashed anything? No, I was just thinking I'm never going to lend guitar. To I'm it. not going to lend guitars, you know. What's that? I'm not going to lend any guitars tonight, I don't know that. <laughs> oh, please, just one, just for old time's sake. <laughs> no, I don't so think I, I so. I used to break microphones, Chris, don't worry. Oh, Breaking mics. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's looking forward to seeing you. It's very dramatic smashing the little ones, though, is it? No, no. no you can kind of crunch them in your teeth. That's it. <laughs> if you're going to do it the old way, you're going to have to pick yourself up, twirl yourself around the head. And that's right. Now, that's going to yeah, be worth seeing. Now, last year was your 50th birthday. Do you find that uh, sort of middle You would bring that up, wouldn't you? <laughs> just to make us feel really at home. No, but it's, it's a fact, Roger. And do you find middle-aged attitudes creeping in now? Like, you listen to young people's music and go, it's too loud, I don't understand no. it. No, I have to turn it up because I can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have what Pete has, though, the ringing in the ears, do you? I don't think he has it very often. He has it when he needs it. <laughs> when he doesn't want to go somewhere. Just to get out of military I don't service. want to go on tour this week. I've got tinnitus. Oh, I see. So, But it's gone the next week when he's sailing. <laughs> that's, that's useful. It was when you, you held a 50th birthday concert at Carnegie Hall, it was you and John and, and Peter Embristle and Lou Reed, and also Eddie Vedder. 
And after the show, Eddie trashed his dressing room, uh, sprayed blood on it and scrawled, this it is my generation. It wasn't blood? It was ketchup. Oh, right. What a cop out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he didn't have the balls to slash his wrists. <laughs> Pretend rock and roller. Oh, right. I, well, I was going to ask, did you appreciate the gesture, but obviously you hold it in contempt. No, no he paid the bill, so I thought it was rather gentlemanly. Yeah. You know, so. Was there actually a, ever... Did you heavily get into the, the breaking things yourself? No, actually, I didn't. I used to go around mending things. <laughs> it was, you know, I, I used to have to work... I, when I started this band, and I, I started this band, uh, I was 14 years old. And I actually literally had to build the guitars. We were so poor. Yeah. And to see things smashed up really went against the grain with me. So I used to just stay away from it. So when was the first time I used to have great fun, kind of, because Moon did it. People don't realise that when Moon smashed the hotel room up, it wasn't just wanton destruction. It was incredibly creative. <laughs> and it was like an, an episode of 40 Towers. You know, it was extraordinary. Why? What was it? What was well, his I mean, most creative think, one? He'd do things like he wouldn't just smash the TV. He would get a, an extension lead and have the TV on the edge of the balcony, which mm. would then t tune it into his favourite channel, and, and then push it over the balcony and watch it disappear on the length of this lead into the swimming pool, <laughs> just to see what would happen to his program. <laughs> Incredibly creative, unless you were one of the bathers w that were in the yeah, pool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so th this wasn't just you know some pissed guy with too much money. This was art. This it really was art. I yeah. mean, he went he went to a brothel once uh, in, in I won't mention where, no. and he got every girl from this brothel, and he took them to a room, and they had the most amazing pillow fight and duvet fight. And he Is that what he told you? And, and, <laughs> and he, we had he, a pillow fight. He, yeah. <laughs> he previously covered, stripped these girls naked and covered them in honey. Yeah, we've all done that, right? That's right. <laughs> but then after the pillow fight, they yes. were all covered in these feathers. Yeah. And it looked like one of those Christmas shaky toys. <laughs> And he phoned me up at like six o'clock in the morning. He said, you've got to come and see this room. And I went down there and it was uh, the most un amazing sight because he had all these girls in kind of various poses like this. <laughs> 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 you know the kind of poses they do. Yes. <laughs> All covered in feathers. Yep. With, and it was wonderful. Pure. I mean, if he could have sold it, it would have been priceless. <laughs> Getting it in the frame yes. is a bugger, though, isn't it? <laughs> the girls were expensive. Now, I've got bad news for you. This is when you go on a show called Hey Hey, it's Saturday, uh, recorded on Friday. Um, you're going to have a. <laughs> You're gonna, Friday. Yeah, you're gonna have a horrible flashback when you see this large thing running around covered in feathers. Don't be alarmed, Keith isn't back. <laughs> well, Roger, please hang around because there's a lot more to talk about. And also, Chris, please thank Roger Daltrey. The Richter Scale, a measure of the power of the words in a rock song. Well, Jim Morrison died in 71, and they disbanded in 73, but the doors remain bigger than ever. Last year, the three surviving band members got back in the studio to put down some backing tracks for some of Jim's poetry recorded on his 27th birthday. It's become the album An American Prayer, which our next guest is here to promote. Please welcome the founder of The Doors and their keyboarder, Rista, 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 Mr. Ray Manzarak. That's all right. Oh, you did I'm good. Sorry. You did good. Ray, yeah. come on in. All right, guys. Roger, Chris. Hey, boss. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We've got a fair slice of rock and roll history here right now. This is not bad. This no, is a, quite a lineup. Does this happen every day on the show? Yeah, we had the Beatles in last week. Were they? How were they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but John again, very reluctant, but there you go. <laughs> now, the, the 60s were, you know, peace, love, mung beans, all of that, but the doors went a, a much darker way. Was that a deliberate ploy to run against the pack? Um, none of it was a ploy. Yeah. The, uh, the whole 60s was about reality. That's, uh, it, it wasn't a joke, it wasn't a game, it was a serious uh, undertaking to actually change the course of uh, human history. And uh, perhaps we didn't do it, but uh, we certainly got high. Had a decent shot with Vietnam. <laughs> So, well, See, that wasn't our war. That's the whole point of it. What we were trying to do was to stop the war. The, yeah. uh, you know, there's a saying, uh, hippies have a saying, it's called make love, not war. We didn't want the war. We wanted to stop the war. 
Otherwise, we, uh, I mean, God knows, you know, a couple of guys like us, a uh, young pup We didn't have the wool, but we sure made a little love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got high, too. <laughs> oh, I love rock and roll talk. I love it. We ingested certain substances that are now uh, proscribed, now illegal, but yeah, uh, yeah. at the time, uh, 65, 6, 7, LSD was not uh, an illegal drug. Really? And, uh... You could open the doors of perception if you dared, if you had the courage, right. if you had there we the go guts. The name. What was, if you had the guts, take me inside a trip, right? Uh, well, it's a, uh, it's, it's a classic spiritual um, merging with the universe in which you realize that you, Andrew, are actually at one with the entire universe. No, no, I won't. That's what not I the one to... I went on. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't have that one? No, 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 it's not a totally different. No, oh, Ray really? Got, Ray got the group, group therapy <laughs> Excuse me, Ray. We had the California one. <laughs> yes, did, you have, did you have the... I had the Shepherd's Bush one. Oh, it looked like a sign. Was that the Gila monsters coming out of the eyes and the yeah. tongue on fire trip? That's that right. One? Yeah, right. Well, yeah. that one exists too, but that's the other side of the coin. So you're going to balance off heaven and hell and, uh, you know, Aldous Huxley's book, The Doors of Perception. If anyone reads anymore, I'd highly advise uh, looking into Aldous Huxley's book, the doors of perception if you want to know what psychedelic is all about that will explain it to you towards the late 60s a lot of police were coming to your gigs and there was a lot of hostility what was it like playing under those circumstances that was insane the cops were lining the stage between me and you guys it's a row of cops now I don't know whether they were to protect us from you or to protect you from us or how it worked but uh, Morrison was actually busted uh, you know Miami happened and did he actually expose himself because that was the charge that was the charge that was one of the charges he was up on four charges uh, obscenity drunkenness uh, filth and singing uh, in a minor and, key and, in a public place things like that. something like that an overlong member I think <laughs> so he did expose himself well we're not sure there was a stack of photos entered into evidence 200 photos and not one having photos of everything not one of the photos did the ivory shaft appear uh, but you were sitting there uh, from where you sat from where from where I sat I didn't see it he right. was holding his shirt in front of him and kind of moving it. he taking his shirt off moving it back and forth saying I'm gonna show it to you I'm gonna show it to you watch this watch this hey did you see it hey there it was and look at there it is there it is and whether or not it was ever seen I'm not sure yeah. and I think had it been seen, well, there would have been women sighing and perhaps weeping and <laughs> screaming with joy. I, I'm not sure what. You know. Well, it uh, depends how big it actually was there, right? I mean, it was a big auditorium we're talking about. Well, it wasn't that big. The, oh, the auditorium. <laughs> yeah, <right>. sorry. <laughs> now, what was it like uh, working with somebody who really took life well, to the edge and beyond it, in fact? Uh, maddening, insane, and uh, delightful and joyous and, uh, you know, rhythmic and intense and powerful and passionate. You've been practicing your adjectives and that was, <laughs> that's, that's very, very good. Does, I mean, did, did Jim Morrison influence you, Rog? No, I couldn't stand their music. <laughs> 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 drive me nuts. Come on, you wanted that no, I, I, out. No, no. I mean, they were, they were kind of West Coast America. We, we were London. Yeah. And uh, Didn't these guys, they I were like, before uh, us. I mean, we, uh, we, I don't think we influenced you guys. If anything, you guys uh, had a little influence on us. This man li influenced Jim Morrison. I don't, I don't think it went the other way around. Jim Morrison I obviously influenced him at the Yellow White when he drunk my bloody Southern Comfort. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. You I got mean, him I, drunk, I, man. You were plotting. I got you Jim got Morrison drunk with you started the <laughs> He was a virtual virgin. I had you a full over. bottle of Southern Comfort yeah. and I had one swig out of it and I said, want to drink? Jim? Exactly. Yeah. Well, see, that's... And he gave it back empty. <laughs> <laughs> well, because Keith Mooney would have eaten the bottle, so you were lucky. Now, Chris, did either of these bands have an influence on you? You know, it's like, just listen to all this, it's like, you know, talking about taking trips and all this yeah. stuff. I mean, I, I never smoked marijuana or took a trip or anything, and probably, I don't know if you get, do you get Dragnet over here with, you know, Joe Friday? Uh, we remember Dragnet, yeah. Did you ever see that? There's an episode on there where, like, the guys take LSD and then they all end up dead. <laughs> I, saw that. I just saw I just saw that, so you know I just had back. Chris right is a off, surfer, you know. Yeah. You, uh, Chris is on a natural high, man. Obviously, <laughs> you it. know this man is straight arrow and uh, a good human being. You know that's what it's about. It's about being a good human being on the planet. Oh, right, you you're have so lovely. The guts. This is like this is like we got good and evil here fighting it out. Exactly. I, saw, I saw him before he was on TV today. I saw him this morning at breakfast. Yep. He's the same way. 
<laughs> oh, no. So he's, he. he's a nice guy. He, he's the same way. He goes, how you doing? He gave me his number and stuff. I mean, he's, he's cool. Well, actually, the, the album, you, Missing You Already, yeah. An American Prayer. Um, what was it like going back in the studio recording uh, with a ghost? Of course, you had Jim's voice in your ears. He was in the earphones. John and Robbie and I are in the recording studios about four months, five months ago. We're playing our music. We're hearing Jim in the earphones. When you're in the studio, the singer is always in a, uh, in a soundproof booth. It's called a vocal room or whatever the hell it's called. And you're playing your music. You're with the other guys. And he's off there. You go back into the studio and all four of you are there to listen. And he wasn't there, man. It was, it was like a ghost. You're yeah, right. It was, uh, the spirit was there. The energy was there. But the physical presence wasn't there anymore. Was it uh, boogity boogity? No, 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 man. <laughs> no, it's not oogity boogity. <laughs> okay, just thought I'd ask. Okay, well, you did, and no, it wasn't like that. <laughs> oh, well, that's a bit disappointing. Uh, Ray, Roger, Chris, don't move from these seats, right. because we've got something very special for you coming up in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Manzarek. Did you like our music? Now, we've put you all it's on uh, here. vinyl chairs because we want to know once and for all if you guys sound better on vinyl. Can I ask Dick Dale a question? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I got a question I want to ask you, and a serious question. Did you ever play with Lawrence Welk? I'm no, serious. that's another Dick Dale. He's an older Dick Dale. But he played... There's no older Dick Dale. <laughs> there is no older Dick Dale. <laughs> but I, saw, I got a picture, and it's got a left-handed... It's not you. No, he was, a, uh, he was another person who... Played and sang with uh, Lawrence Welk, yeah. Wow. A lot of people used to confuse us at that one point, yeah. I, I could imagine you'd be confused yeah. with a number of people, Dick, yes, just right. looking at you. You're just so common. <laughs> <laughs> Not once you met him, you didn't confuse him, right? No, absolutely not. Now, guys, I've got some, some general rock and roll questions I want to throw at you, sort of uh, trawling through your life experiences. Uh, starting with you, Dick, what's the, what's the most ridiculous thing you've ever worn in public? Most that I've ever worn in public? Yep. Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> no, I'm only teeth. No, it's true. <laughs> I live my life like that where we live. The only time I put clothes on is when the horses move their ears and I know someone's coming up the road, so. <laughs> Way to go. That sounds like it should be on the bottom of a desk calendar somewhere. That's great. Yeah. What about you, Ray? Well, uh, the most, one of the most ridiculous things I've seen, um, and uh, forgive me, Andrew, is certainly your, your outfit today. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> oh, Ray, okay. Ray, well. this is raw sex here, but whatever. It you know. is, you know it is, it is. Ladies, uh, is this man sexy or what? No, don't ask, please. All right, yeah. all right. What's well, the most ridiculous thing I you, you ever, ever wore? wore? Yeah, in public. I, I, I can't even think. The question is absurd. You know, it's like, what did you wear in public? You know, it's like... It's a non sequitur, isn't it? No, no, Roger, no, 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 on to Roger. What? <laughs> Don't fake I was just wondering now. what he was doing with the horses. I'm so bars away. The most absurd What's thing the question? Oh, look, oh, look, I'll move on to another question. I think Ray's effectively like sparked this one. Mind, isn't it? Okay, Ray, here's one I know you can okay. answer. Because okay. I know uh, on Strange Days you actually played an entire song backwards. Backwards, For, for yes, reasons which yes, escaped yes, me. Yes. What is the most uh, bizarre musical effect you ever attempted? Uh, probably playing a piano piece, an entire piano piece backwards, starting writing the music out, reading it from top to bottom, left to right, and instead flipping the tape over, starting at the bottom, and continuing along, one, two, three, four, measure by measure by measure by measure, getting up to the top until, oh my God, the end of the song, I've got two more measures to go, it should begin, ah, and it happened. Wouldn't it have been easier just to write it the other way around? Whoa. <laughs> the 60s make sense. Psychedelic, yeah. right here. Okay, you've got it. Now you understand it. No. Uh, Chris, what about you? The, 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 the weirdest musical effect you've attempted? Well, we got booked one time. The band got booked early on in a bar that was a Filipino bar. And uh, we were, but we lied and said that we were a Filipino band. <laughs> and, uh, and so we, so we were, I tried to learn phonetically one or two songs in Tagalog. Tagalog. And, um, <laughs> I'm serious, yeah. and, I, and uh, we, we did those like one or two songs, and then after that, then I just kind of was making stuff up. But, <laughs> but you know something? They didn't seem to notice. <laughs> so I don't know. And 
you know something else? The song you made up started a tribal war in the Philippines, which is right in Buddha's name. What about you, Rog? What's the, that's a pretty good one, Chris. Uh, the weirdest... See, I'm calling you Rog. We're what's, very this, close what's, what's this question? The, <laughs> <laughs> the troublemaker okay. in class. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Don't we stand up. No, what is the, the weirdest musical effect you ever attempted on stage or in the studio? On stage or in the studio, the weirdest musical effect... Uh, <laughs> Don't I'd, tell him, Roger. Our whole career, <laughs> our whole career was a weird <laughs> music. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Do me a favour. Do you want some thinking music? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, look, I'll give you some. Thank you. I'll give you some thinking uh, time there, Dick. <laughs> what? <laughs> What you were saying before about uh, the LSD yeah. thing, Chris? I'm on your side now. I really am. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's. Here's a simple one. What is the greatest rock and roll act ever to have walked the face of the earth, Dick? <laughs> Boy, this was a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, this is like a lineup out of a police station. <laughs> it was great. No, I, you know, <laughs> we didn't do nothing. When are you gonna let us go? <laughs> No, no, I no, could never talk. It that. wasn't even the, even the question, but who cares? Um, okay, no, I'll try another one. I'll try, I'll try another well, question. You can't <laughs> <laughs> Matt Durak! Yes, yes, sir. What's the musical genre or group you most loathe? Loathe, most loathe. loathe. Come on, be honest here. Uh, most loathe. Come on. God, you know. You think of all these people you might Heavy metal. <laughs> Heavy metal? Yeah, and it's probably because of... of what I'm I... wearing, thanks very much. Don't obsess, please. <laughs> Roger, that was a simple question. How do you think oh. you'll do with that one? Well, uh, he's answered it. You had heavy metal? <laughs> ask me one. Ask me a different one. Ask you a different one? Uh, yeah. The so weirdest groupie. The weirdest groupie? The, the most no. memorable groupie you had. Oh, no. oh, well, oh, now oh, we're in yeah. <laughs> we, we could be here all night. Oh, oh, finally, we get played. we got time. Yeah. 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 Right. The plaster casters. Sorry? <laughs> right. The plaster, plaster right. The plaster casters of Chicago. I never heard that, of that. That wasn't a Fender plaster no, caster, was it? They no, they were amazing. <laughs> well, they used, they used, they used, well, for the well, they used to make plaster casts of the important part of rock stars, you know. What, the ego? Off stage. Not the All right. <laughs> In the important and they'd come to your important. room with their little bag of uh, plaster and moulds and things. Yes. And, you know, the, the, I remember and that. do the business. And, and one girl was the plater. Well, you, right. you each meant the plaster casters. Oh, so we, helped, we helped them out a few times. Many yeah. people, many people did. <laughs> did, did you know? the and they had a whole line of penises. Yes. Plaster casting. Yes. Yeah. In various stages of erection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever keep track of where you're And apparently you? some... some That's a whole new the meaning to hard they're, rock, they're, doesn't it? <laughs> that somebody stole them. Somebody stole them? Uh, one of the girl's managers, she, one of the girls actually got a manager, and he stole the penises. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he was going to put them in some of his. Yeah, right. Ooh, <laughs> a, good idea. But That's she's now he suing him. Took, if, if you ever kept track of where his, where his went. Uh, yeah, did you keep track of where yours went? You could have asked him that. No, I don't, no. I, no, I, I, I don't, uh, uh, God forbid, I, I hate to think where mine Rock and roll hall, hall of fame. <laughs> 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 was that... Is that the Hall of Fame or Hall of yeah, Fame? Thing? <laughs> it's that accent. Look, guys, uh, it seems to me you have here the makings of an extraordinary supergroup. Yes, we do. Capable maybe of singing, but not maybe of answering a question. So um, <laughs> we have some instruments here, uh, a variety of top quality instruments uh, made by skilled <laughs> artisans here at Channel 7. Um, and uh, so what about after the break? We, uh, we just have a bit of a jam, huh? That would be a lot of fun. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> And you know, I'm convinced. After the break, that's it. The Super Girl, Chris Isaac, Roger Dolce, Ray Manzarek, and Dick Dale. Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> Just had a fairly amazing commercial break. It's been like the trog station here. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. But I think we've settled on one, the Isaac Daltrey Manzarak Dale uh, semi super group, and uh, we're going to go for my generation. Oh, but wait right? a sec, though. We had a meeting, you know, when you was gone. Yeah. You're out of the band. 